there's all sorts of hidden Easter eggs this season. Uh, I'll be very curious to see which ones get by the audience because there's more than you think there are. I'm the devil of Hell's Living Room, Lorraine Sink. I'm Foggy Nelson's worst nightmare. I'm Langston Belton. Ooh, I'm Wilson Fisk's silky white suit, Ryan Panagos, aka Agent M. And this is an Earth's Mightiest Show special counting down to the release of Marvel's Daredevil season three. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All episodes drop tomorrow only on Netflix, and we're breaking down what you need to know to prepare yourself to watch it or watch it again and again and again. Which we all will, yes, of course. Uh, we've got special insight from this season's showrunner, Eric Olson, and maybe even a special hello from your favorite hero. Oh yeah, and since we're getting into the devilish spirit, we have some Daredevil themed snacks straight out of Hell's Kitchen. Ha ha, ha cha, Hell's Kitchen. Oh, you like that? Boy. That was pretty good. I love all this, I wanna dig into this, but I, I could use a little refresher on where we've been so far in the show. You know what, us too. That's why we have Angelique Rocher giving us an ASAP recap of Marvel's Daredevil so far. Enjoy. Here's your ASAP recap in three, two, Marvel's Daredevil season one. A plague childhood leaves Matt Murdock orphaned and without his sense of sight. I can't see! Vowing not to let setbacks define him, Matt finds solace in martial arts under the guidance of Chase leader, Stick. The experience allows him to grow into a super tough and adept fighter. Now a lawyer by day, vigilante by night, Matt's mission is to protect the people of Hell's Kitchen and avenge those who threaten the city. Along with Foggy Nelson, Matt's law school bestie, and office assistant part-time love interest Karen Page, they form the firm Nelson & Murdoch to represent those left defenseless by the injustices of crime. As corruption rises, Wilson Fisk emerges as the city's new face of power. Like Matt, Fisk seeks to serve the kitchen, his tactics are just dirtier. Where Matt hopes to preserve Hell's Kitchen, Fisk wants to cleanse it with fire, then rebuild his kingdom. This city needs to die before it can be reborn. When Matt's gang gets in too deep, Fisk's right-hand man, Wesley, kidnaps Karen and blackmails her for something dark in her past. Karen manages to kill him and escape being exposed. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of all-out slugfests with Fisk's baddies, and eventually Matt beats Fisk the right way, using the law. With Fisk locked up, his boo Vanessa escapes to Europe, and the press give Matt his trusty new name, Daredevil. In season two, Matt's college girlfriend, Electra, re-enters his life. With her return comes the ancient Order of the Hand, who seeks to control NYC's underground. And if that weren't enough, Frank Castle shows up to challenge Matt as the city's newest vigilante. Matt is trying to keep everyone from killing each other. No killing. And do right by his best bud Foggy and his could-be best girl Karen. And while he manages to stop the Hand, Elektra is killed in the crossfire. On top of all that, Nelson and Murdoch close his shop. It's really over, huh? Foggy sells out to join the big firm of Hogarth, Chow, and Benowitz, and Karen assumes the role vacated by her slain friend, reporter, Ben Urich. But wait, the hand is back in full force for Marvel's The Defenders, and surprise, so is Elektra? She's resurrected and fiercer than ever. Matt bands together with Luke Cage, Danny Rand, and Jessica Jones to defend New York City, but Elektra just can't be stopped. In the final battle at Midland Circle, Jessica, Luke, and Danny manage to escape, but Matt remains to save Elektra, the woman he loves. An explosion collapses the building onto Matt and Elektra, but ding dong, Daredevil is dead. Sorry, Foggy and Karen, but it looks like your friend Matt is not coming back. Oh wait, nuns? And there you have it. Make sure to check out Marvel's The Defenders and Marvel's Daredevil season one and two, now streaming all episodes on Netflix. Ah, that was awesome. I feel so much more informed. Heck yeah. Now, did you notice that the nun moment is right from the comics? Oh, yeah. Don't recognize it? Don't worry, we'll have more about that later in the show. So we of course watched all those shows, but the last place that we really saw Daredevil was in the teaser and trailer. We actually poured some time into reviewing the trailer, so we're gonna offer you guys our expert commentary to fill out what you might have missed with the layman's eye. Yeah, here is the trailer for Marvel's Daredevil season three, now with 100% more commentary from us. Ooh, let's watch. Whispering, we're inside Matt's head. I used to listen oh yeah, this is classic Daredevil classic right here. Hell. That's what I was trying to do, was help people. <gasps> oh! But I was fooling myself. Darkness only responds to darkness. Ooh, that is a well-lit parking garage. I actually feel safe there. Here he is fighting darkness with darkness. I'm Daredevil. He says he's Daredevil. It's like, it's a big statement for him to like, claim it, you know what I mean? I have made many mistakes. This is the same shot that we introduced Fisk with in the original series. Prison has changed me. 
What is it you're saying? I want to make a deal. Bad news for Nelson and Murdoch since they put him away. Well, Matt Murdoch is Daredevil. He can take care of himself. How is Foggy going to manage? It's like baptism here. Now he's fresh, clean, ready for everyone. In a white satin suit. It's a bold choice. But boom, right there, he's still the same dark person inside. That is something that I cannot forgive. Yeah, Fisk has been playing how to take down Nelson and Murdoch this whole time. There's only one way to stop me, but you're not going to do it. You sure about that? Look at this epic fight. It's all about Fisk versus Daredevil. Just be careful that you don't become the monster. There it is, the crux of the season. Will he sacrifice his soul to save New York? I will tell the world who you really are. Well, I, I do not think Someone Matt's in a good place right now. His true colors. Oh. <gasps> Jeez. I have to hurt one person for the greater good. You know, something is changing for Matt. The city needs a new villain. I think I might have found him. Daredevil is our true public enemy. I mean, look, Daredevil in a church, fighting at the bulletin? The attack has been carried out by none other than, wait for it, the gun. It's clearly not Matt Daredevil. in that costume. Oh, this is great. Who are you? I'm Daredevil. Yeah! And there you have it. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Yay! Hey, let's watch it again! Yes, I can watch it over and over. <laughs> I want to, and I really, really do want to, but we have a lot more to get into. Yes, let's talk about our takeaways real quick. Um, so Matt, I think, is going to be struggling with his identity a lot this season, especially because he can't be Matt Murdock and he can't be Daredevil because Wilson Fisk is hunting both of them. Yeah, and he's not just hunting Matt, he's going after the people who put him away, which includes Foggy Nelson and Karen Page. And then you throw Vanessa into the mix, Wilson is not pleased. No, and uh, in Matt's personal life, he's also dealing uh, with Sister Maggie, and it might be an important piece of that puzzle. Yeah, because ultimately Ultimately, Daredevil is a devout Catholic, and we got to find out, can he keep his soul, but also save Hell's Kitchen? Uh, but there is one piece of the puzzle that we haven't gotten to yet, and that is the behind the scenes, which is why we have a special chat with showrunner Eric Olson about the making of Marvel's Daredevil Season 3. In real life, my father ran operations for the Defense Intelligence Agency. For a time, he was an intelligence official, so I'm very interested in spy kind of stories. I grew up around that world. And combining that with the comic book runs, all of that kind of went into the pot. And we came up with something that uh, has a lot of twists and turns and is hopefully really unpredictable. One of my guiding principles for season three was I didn't want to treat anybody like a sidekick. I wanted everybody to be the hero of their own story. By kind of applying that rule to all of the cast, we were able to go deeper, to really get into people's heads and why they behave the way that they behave. I wanted to, to flesh out some of the backstories of some of these characters, and those are all baked into the overall structure of the season, which is the story of different characters uh, grappling with the fears that hold them back. And that became kind of a like a, a guiding light for all of us in the writer's room. Like, what's Fisk afraid of? What's Matt afraid of? What's Karen afraid of? And, and that really, for me, gave us kind of the thematic resonance that allowed the show to go, to go deeper. One of the techniques that we used this season was, was something called deep point of view. And I had a rule where uh, the camera could only follow one of six characters. And you come into the scene with those characters in their point of view, and you leave the scene in their point of view. What it allowed us to do was really ground it, really make it feel real. When we got to an action sequence, I wanted it to have real emotional stakes. So I imposed rules in the writer's room and with the directors. We were never going to do an action sequence which was just um, there for having an action sequence's sake. We were going to learn something new about Matt's character or there were real stakes in the scene. He, he might lose a fight. In, in, in the best drama, for me, it's, it's better when you really don't know what's going to happen next. There are certain key uh, comic frames that you will recognize on the screen of season three. I mean, there's that iconic shot of Daredevil holding on to a crucifix on top of a church. But for people who have no familiarity with those comic runs, it, it will feel organic and natural. You won't even notice it. But there's all sorts of hidden Easter eggs this season. Uh, I'll be very curious to see which ones get by the audience because there's more than you think there are. 
we wanted to do something that was a little bit more hardcore. And I think we uh, ended up pulling that off. You'll judge, we'll see. Oh man, I love Eric. So cool, so insightful about this season. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna be looking for those Easter eggs. Oh, but you know, once we've watched the show, there are other ways to get into Daredevil. Oh, that's right, with comics. You know that, always yeah. invest in the comics. Ryan, you made a pull list for us. What are some Daredevil comics you might wanna read to uh, get into that spirit? Okay, first and foremost, uh, one of my favorite comic books of all time, one of the greatest comic book stories of all time, Daredevil Born Again by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. It features Karen Page at her lowest, leading her to selling out Daredevil's secret identity to the Kingpin. Oh yeah, and there's that nun art. Also, Wilson destroys Matt's life and Matt rises up to beat him. Y'all want another? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, how about Daredevil? Guardian Devil by Kevin Smith, Joe Quesada, and Jimmy Palmiotti. It's 20 years old this year and it still hits you in the feels. Yeah, Karen returns to Matt's life after years away only to find herself between Daredevil and the bloodthirsty twisted killer, Bullseye. Oh, and this is just a Marvel Knights classic. It's gonna move you and it's gonna make you straight up hate that jerk face. There are a ton of amazing Wilson Fisk stories, but I like to go back to Daredevil Love and War, a graphic novel from 1986 by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz. It really focuses on Wilson Fisk and the love of his life, Vanessa what she means to him, what he'll do for her, and how much that relationship pushes Fisk into an ongoing battle against Daredevil. Also, it is friggin' gorgeous. It sure is. We're gonna put links to all of these comics on Marvel.com and Earth's Mightiest Show's Facebook page so you can read them there yourselves. Yeah. Oh, you know, we're also gonna have special content from Marvel Games. Yeah, look out for a new Daredevil event for Avengers Academy kicking off October 19th, adding new costumes for Daredevil as well as Loki and Jessica Jones. And they'll be adding new characters like Bullseye and White Tiger. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and you know, there's actually one more thing that we need to do. Here is a hello from the devil's own mouth. Hey Marvel fans, my name's Charlie Cox from Marvel's Daredevil, streaming only on Netflix. Can't wait for you guys to check out season three. What are you doing? I have to go now, he's safe. Uh... No, 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 don't do this. I don't have a choice, he'll come for Betsy. Why did he ask you to trap me here? Is he coming? Tell me who wore the suit. I will find him, I will put an end to this. I can't, this will know. It'll hurt Betsy. Oh, if you really loved her, you'd cut her loose. This life doesn't work with Betsy. I can't let you leave! a better way that we could wrap up the show. Oh yeah, watch all episodes of Marvel's Daredevil seasons one and two now because season three starts streaming tomorrow only on Netflix. And check out that reading list on the Earth's Media Show's Facebook page and marvel.com. Plus, check out even more about Daredevil, Fisk, and all your other favorite heroes and villains. Yeah, I'm Lorraine. I'm Langston. I'm Ryan, and this is Marvel. Your, your universe. universe. Twinsies. for watching Earth's Mightiest Show. If you like this, hey, then like this. And subscribe to the Marvel Channel. Or watch our last episode over there. Uh, fun fact. <gasps> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs>